Now here comes the clever part to solve the wave function for the simple harmonic oscillator. If the lowering operator A- minus is used repeatedly, then eventually the ground state, being the lowest possible state, will be reached. This means that if the lowering operator is applied to the lowest possible state, A- minus times psi, then the result will be zero. This is because there's no state below the ground state. Now that we have the statement, we can expand A- minus, and we get a first order differential equation which can be solved to find the ground state wave function. We will solve this to get a wave function psi naught being equal to a e to the negative m omega over 2h bar times x squared. After we normalize this ground state wave function we can then apply the raising operator a plus to get all the other wave functions one at a time. So again we're starting with this statement where we say when we apply the lowering operator to the ground state wave function, then since there's no wave function or there's no state below the ground state, then we should end up with zero. And we're going to use this to create a, a differential equation which we can easily solve to then find what is psi naught. So let's do that. So if I sub in explicitly for a minus, I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 2 h bar m times omega times h hat d by dx plus m omega x and that's going to be applied to psi naught and that's equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute in these constants out front and I'm going to distribute in from the right the psi naught and so what I'm going to get is h bar over 2m omega and that's all inside a square root. I'm going to have d psi naught by dx. To that I'm going to be adding on to m omega over 2 h bar, all inside a square root, times x times psi naught, and that's equal to zero. I'm going to move the second term to the left, or sorry, to the right hand side, square root of h bar over 2 m omega, d psi naught over dx is equal to negative m omega over 2 h bar, square root x times psi naught and then I'm just going to use the technique separation of variables in order to solve this differential equation so I'm going to divide both sides by psi naught multiply both sides by dx and I'm just going to move all the constants to the right hand side so on my left hand side I'm just going to get d psi naught over psi naught and on my right hand side I'm going to get negative 2m omega divided by h bar, square root, m omega over 2h bar, square root, I'm going to get x times dx. And so in this case, I'm just going to now just integrate both sides. I'm going to also cancel out this 2 on top and this 2 on the bottom. And right now I've got the square root of m omega over h bar, times m omega over h bar, and so that essentially will get rid of my square roots. On my left hand side I evaluate this integral, and I'm going to get natural logarithm of psi naught. That's going to be equal to negative m omega over h bar. The integral of x is just x squared over 2. And since these are indefinite integrals, then I have to add a constant of proportionality. So now let's solve for psi naught. What needs to happen now is I take the exponential of both sides, so I get psi naught is equal to e to the power of negative m omega over 2 h bar x squared plus c. And the rules for exponentials, if I've got um, two terms added together, then that's the same thing as having the multiplication of those two terms. So I've got psi naught is equal to e times negative m omega over 2 h bar x squared times e to the c and this e to the c well that's just some constant so I can just write that as psi naught is equal to a times e negative m omega over 2 h bar x squared. Let's normalize this now so that we can have a fully defined solution. Again our normalization condition is that we're going to be integrating through all space so over negative infinity to infinity psi star times psi dx and that's equal to 1. Negative infinity to infinity, the integral over those bounds, 
well, my complex conjugate is going to be the same as my wave function itself because I don't have a complex part in there. So I'm just going to write a e to the negative m omega over 2 h bar times x squared times a e negative m omega over 2 h bar times x squared times gx, and that's equal to 1. So I can pull out my a's, and since I'm going to be multiplying together two exponential terms, I can sum the parts in the exponents. a squared integral between negative infinity to infinity, e to the negative m omega over h bar times x squared. And that's still equal to 1. And I still need a dx. So this definite integral, this integral between minus infinity to infinity of some exponential raised to the power of x squared with some constants in it, well, I can look up in an integral table and I can find that this is a fairly standard integral which is solved, where I can have the integral from negative infinity to infinity minus a being a bunch of constants, x squared, well, that's just equal to the square root of pi over a. So I can use this and substitute in and solve for this integral. That means I'm going to have a squared, and that's going to be times, well, I've got the square root of pi over a, so there's pi divided by a is going to be equal to m omega divided by h bar. And that's still equal to 1. Well, since now I've got pi divided by m omega divided by h bar, then the h bar can go on top. So I'm going to get a squared times the square root of pi h bar divided by m omega. And that's equal to 1. But now I can just move that to the other side. I have to multiply both sides by the square root of m omega divided by pi h bar. a squared is equal to m omega divided by pi h bar times the square root. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So that means then that my a is equal to m omega over pi h bar raised to the power of a quarter, because the square root of a square root is a quarter. That means then my fully defined ground state wave function is going to be equal to m omega over pi h bar to the power of one quarter times e to the negative m omega over 2 h bar times x squared. And as you can see, when we were first looking at this problem, we had a second order differential equation that was going to be a very complicated thing to solve. And now by using a little bit of ingenuity, and essentially by using these raising and lowering operators, we were able to very easily solve for this ground state wave function. And now that we have this ground state wave function, all we need to do is apply the raising operator to it, and that we then can sequentially get all the other wave functions.